Hey everyone, this is Mark from AMT Motorsport, and today we're going to be showing you our ultra-low seat mount, how we make it, all the parts that are included with it when you buy it, and how to install it in your C5, C6, or C7 Corvette. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you've sat in a Corvette before and realized that the stock seats that have come with are crap for track use. Also, when you get on track with the stock seats and you're wearing a helmet, your head is probably touching the roof. So we developed this ultra-low seat mount to get your seat ultra-low. You cannot get a racing seat any lower in a Corvette than you can with our mount. When you open the box, you're going to see the following items. Our floor mount rails, right and left side seat brackets, floor mount hardware, and optional sub belt bar. The floor mount rails are machined from 6061 aluminum extrusions. Uh, all the windows you see in here are for weight reduction. These slots here accept the optional sub belt bar. The holes are for the rear mounting positions, and the front slot is for your front side brackets for adjustability. Next thing you're going to see in the box are going to be the two bags labeled right side and left side brackets. There is a front and a rear bracket, and these brackets have an additional hex machine so they can be rotated 90 degrees for a high seating position or a low seating position. This larger L is going to go in the front slot area for your front mounting position, and this shorter bracket is going to attach in the rear holes for your rear mounting position. Next bag you'll find will be labeled floor mount hardware. These are our adapters that go over the stock seat studs in the floor of your Corvette. Finally, our optional sub belt bar will allow you to mount a five or six point harness directly to the floor mount rails. Uh, you'll see this actually happening later in our install video. Hey guys, so now we're at the actual Corvette here. This is my C5 race car. We've told you a little bit about the product. Now we're gonna show you actually how we actually go about installing these things in a C5 or C6 Corvette. All right, guys, so the first thing you need to have done is get all of your stock seats out of the way, all your stock belts out of the way. Um, obviously, my car is a race car, so it has no carpet in it. Uh, but what you're trying to get down to here is these stock um, seat, uh, seat studs that come uh, as, part of the, as part of the floor plan of the Corvette. We're going to use our, our uh, seat extender adapters to screw onto those, the, those stock seat studs. You'll see I have a washer underneath those things. That's to disperse the load on that. Um, so we don't crush the balsa wood floor when we screw these things down to somewhere about 30, 35 foot pounds. You're going to need a one inch socket if you actually want to use a torque wrench on that thing. I just make them nice and good and tight um, to the point that we're not crushing the floor. Now, if you do have carpet, you're going to want to space these things up a little bit. Uh, I don't want you to use any more than two washers on those studs so that you have a, a good amount of thread engagement on those stud extenders. Um, so for my car with no carpet, I've got a washer under under each one of these uh, seat extenders. So we're just going to torque those babies down to around 30 foot pounds and go from there. All right. So at this point, we have all four of our seat uh, seat extenders installed. We have a washer under each one of them. At this point, we're ready to start fitting the seat. One thing we have to talk about before we move on, however, is installing lap belts. There's a, there's several wrong ways to do it, and there's usually only one right way to do it. And the right way is to have your lap belt mounted to some part of the frame of the car, whether it's a cage like we have here. I've actually got mine going to the steel part of the frame here. My other lap belt has a bolt going down to the steel uh, cross member from the frame. You think about, if you get in an accident, all of your energy is going forward. You want this, you want this lap belt putting all that energy into the frame of the car. You don't want it going into our mounts. Our mounts are designed to take that, take that weight. Um, you'll avoid the warranty. If you, don't, if, you, if you use our mounts to mount the lap belt, I'm going to show you I don't want you to do it that way, but I'm going to show you the safest way to do that if you do need to go that route. But I highly recommend, you know, installing your lap belt to some part of your frame of your car to put that energy of your body in an impact going into the frame of your car and not the seat mount itself. All right, so now we just have the front bracket installed. These nuts are just loosely tightened. This is a little bit snug, and what we're trying to get here is the ability to slide this thing. So when we drop this thing in the car, you're gonna be sliding this back and forth on both sides of these brackets to get your uh, seat position in the right place for your steering wheel. Make sure your feet are com comfortable. And then we're gonna lock this, actually lock this thing down in the car, take it out, and install the rest of the brackets. But this is gonna make the seat fitting process a hell of a lot easier than trying to guess while you're in the car and put all your, all your rear brackets on. So just gonna lock down the front, get it in the car, and go from there. All right, so now you get to see how fun this car, this seat is to get through a car through an X cage. Most Corvettes don't have, have NASCAR bars. This X design is uh, pretty safe, but also makes it pretty gosh darn difficult to get a seat in here. So it only goes in one way. I got about two inches of clearance. This is why I wanted to make this seat mount as easy as possible because this process sucks. I've done this before, by the way. So if it looks like it's not that bad, that's because this ain't my first rodeo. So seats in, I'm going to try and nudge it over on all of the uh, seat extenders, 
Get my lap belt out of the way. And boom, it's sitting down on the seat extenders right now. All right, so we have the seat in the car. I have slid it into the approximate position where my feet feel comfortable to the pedals. I spent a lot of time sitting in the car to get everything comfy cozy. I had my steering wheel attached, of course, made sure everything was good. And now this is what you're paying for right here. The fact that you don't need a second set of wrenches to do all this stuff. Those hex nuts are captured on the back side of those brackets. Um, so now that we know where it's gonna be, we're gonna put our ratchet in the correct Turn configuration, it's a half inch uh, ratchet for these guys, and just snug them up. Okay. Now we've taken the seat out of the car. Why did we do this? Because there's no way in hell you're gonna get around to the back side of that thing on the transmission tunnel and install these back brackets while it's in there. So you've locked down the front, you've got this nice and snug. Now the seat's gotta come out again, so you can come back here and install these rear brackets. So even with this thing snugged up here, it's very easy to move that seat up. So obviously I've installed this seat already. I know where my, where my bolts are gonna go. In real life, you're, you're gonna install this in the back here. You're gonna bring your seat down and say, hey, I'm as close as I can be to this hole or that hole. And you may need to loosen up the front, move it a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch or so to get it exactly where it needs to be, lining up with one of those holes. But you're not gonna be able to feel an eighth of an inch on your sneaker. If you can, you're a better man than I am. Um, so you've got this snug, you've looked here, you've located your holes, and now you're ready to torque all this stuff down again. This, folks, is what you're paying for here to have those captive nuts on the back side. Um, the, the, the harbor is all sunk in. You don't need a second set of wrenches. You're not going to have any interference with the bottom of the seat. And that's why we call this thing the ultra low mount, because this thing is now all the way down on the ground. No interference from bolts. No second set of hands. No second set of wrenches. Installing a race seat in a car is always a pain, but this one's just a little bit less of a pain than the other guys. All right, so the last part, uh, our next to last part of getting the seat installed back in the car is installing our integrated sub belt bar. That's why we have all these slots and machine in the bottom of the rails, all countersunk to accept um, these screws, which, these hardware, which of course is included with the with everything. It, pretty much you wanna get the sub belt bar as far back as you can from the hole in the seat. So if you obviously, if your seat was mounted much lower, you'd be going down a much further slot for the sub belt bar. Where my seat is located, looks like the right spot here is uh, right around slot number two. So we're gonna to torque those babies up there. Oops. <laughs> Not a bad idea to get these things finger tight just to get them started. center it approximately, uh, you know, eyeballed center in the middle of your five point slot or six point as the case may be. If you're a gentleman, I don't know why you wouldn't be using a six point belt because one belt right up the middle just looks painful to me. So I always recommend a six point harness. Tighten those suckers down. Tighten those suckers down and she's ready to go back in the car. All right, we spoke earlier about mounting the lap belts to uh, transfer your load into the frame of the car. This is a, a different way of doing it. It's the way I don't want you to do it. But if you're gonna do it, I want you to do it this way. So you'll see this customer actually got in an impact at uh, New Jersey Motorsports Park, lost the car at 150 miles an hour. This guy was in a C6Z, hit the wall, multi-G impact. He had a concussion. Um, all of his safety gear worked exactly as it should, and the impact was still so hard that he got a concussion. Um, but you can see he, he did what probably a lot of people do, which is mount the lap belts right into the mount itself. Therefore, putting all of the energy right into the mount. You can see this thing buckled a little bit, totally within design constraints. This thing is going to move in a multi-G impact if you, are mount, if you are putting your load into the mounts. If these things were mounted to the frame of the car, you could bolt these things right back up to the car and, and send it again. Um, but 
at least it did this properly. So rather, so we flipped the mounts around, which of course you can do, as we showed you earlier. These things can mount in any configuration. So he's, he drilled out the center hole and put a nice big eye bolt through there. So he's got a good angle up from his, his lap belt. He's bolting through a half inch thick of aluminum. Um, if you can see it, that hole is where the other, was where the other eye bolt came from. There's zero elongation. So that the aluminum stayed completely intact. It transferred energy into the rest of the mount moved a little bit, and I'm totally okay with that. This guy walked away mostly totally unharmed. All of his equipment worked exactly as it needed to. But again, this is a compromised situation. You wanna to try to avoid this if you can, but if you cannot, do it this way. Double up, drill through, a half inch thick of aluminum, and that thing's not going anywhere. But again, by all means, try and get those, those sub belt, uh, these uh, lap belts mounted into the frame of the car when possible. Hey guys, we're just about coming down the home stretch here. We've put the seat in for the final time. Everything is locked down. Our sub belt is in place. We've run the, uh, the, the, the uh, sub belts and the lap belts where we want them. Last thing we gotta do is you want to get a wash, some washers underneath these. When you actually, before you lay the seats in, you're probably going to want to put a couple of washers or raise it up off the floor or raise it up off the carpet. Um, so these things are basically sitting on their on their on their actual uh, seat extenders. It's very stiff setup. It's very robust. So by the time you lock all this thing down, you don't need to think that it's like sitting on the actual floor itself. This thing can be elevated above the floor, and when you torque it down, it's going to be rock solid. So I got a washer underneath that one to lift it up. One more washer on top. We include lock washers for this process. If you're a lock washer kind of guy, this is a very low vibration uh, uh, part of the car here. So I've never seen one of these things loosen up on me. Finger tight's good enough. No, just kidding. Uh, 15 16 nut on that sucker. I don't have a torque value on it. It's going to get so tight in here that it's basically it's going to be as tight as you can freaking make it without hurting your arm. Because then when you get to the back, it's a real pain in the butt. So that was probably, my arms are basically calibrated torque wrenches. That was probably about 55, 60 foot pounds of torque on that sucker. And she's not going anywhere. So get those all four corners and you are pretty much ready to run this thing. Thanks for watching the video and I hope it's made your installation process a whole lot smoother or even better, convince you to buy one of our ultra low seat mounts. That's stupid. No. You have to show me the frame.